All right, so I'm being told that he came from the county of Lancashire. That's in the northwest of England. He is now hanging out in Brooklyn, New York. He's a fabulous indie acoustic artist, and we have him on the phone right now. Turtle, tell us who we're talking to. We are talking with Greg Holden. How's it going? Very well, thank you. How are you? Hello, Greg. Welcome to the show. So I wanted to talk to you two days before your birthday, about a year ago. You packed up all your stuff, and then you headed out to New York, right? Why? I did. Tell us. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) Done. Love it. All right. (laughs) Next question. (laughs) Is that something that you had wanted to do all your life, or did you just come up with it, or what what was your Um, thought process? It started halfway, halfway into puberty, I would say. I'd say uh, I was. I, a friend introduced me to a few Bob Dylan CDs, and it kind of changed my life. And uh, I kind of did my research on Mr. Dylan, and kind of came up with this dream where I was like, I, I need to be, I need to be in New York. I, I, I got to get out of out of this place and be in New York. So I decided to take a little mission so, and, and figure it out. <laughs> so, so seeing that you do, you know, you just decided to up and go to New York because of uh, Bob Dylan. You know, I noticed that we were listening to your album and all your songs reference New York. Uh, what is it about New York that just is, is so amazing that you, you have this feeling that you need to sing about it? It has great hot drugs. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I'm on the next plane. That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> uh, Mom, Dad, it's a joke. No hard drugs here now. <laughs> no, that's totally a joke. Um, I don't know. There's something enchanting about New York. It's, there's something. Uh, it's like a mystery. And every 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 film that you watch is, is 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 about New York, and it's based in New York, and everything. I don't know. You just. You, I always saw it as this magical place that was. Um, it wasn't obtainable. You know, it was. It, it wasn't something I could possibly ever get to. And then when I realized I had a chance to get there, I was like, well, why not? That's awesome. Uh, so listen, I love your sexy voice. And I also love... Um, <laughs> I like your voice, actually. You have a very sexy voice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Greg, what are you doing later? Um, <laughs> no, um, so I want to talk to you about some of your lyrics. I know Justin was kind of talking about some of your songs, but um, some of your lyrics that really stuck out to me when I was listening to some of your music. Um, the one that, that mentions, you know, it's better to make your mistakes than live without knowing. It's better to fall on your face than to stay on your feet. Mm-hmm. Now, is there like a certain experience that inspired those lyrics? Um, yeah, actually. Uh, I, it was, yeah, let me take you back. It was, <laughs> Let's do it the was, real um, <laughs> <laughs> It happened in the summer of 2007 and I was in a band. Um, I hadn't done any solo stuff. And the band wasn't really going too well. I was kind of downhearted about it and I decided to give it all up. Um, and I, as I decided to give it all up, I, I played my first solo show about a week after I'd been uh, after I'd been away from this band, and I happened to be a producer um, in the in the crowd from America who fell in love with my music and decided to to take me over to New York and make a record with me. And it was just kind of this weird experience where I didn't have any. The guy wasn't going to pay for me or anything, but he was going to he was going to record me for free. But I would have had to find the money for flights and hotels and that sort of thing. So it was one of those situations where it was like, where well, I, I have to do this, and um, this is my this is my chance. So I kind of. This is the first time I sold all my stuff. I sold everything I owned at that point, and <laughs> and, and went over for two weeks to New York to record this to my my first EP, which is called Run Don't Walk. Um, and the the, the the song was more about the experience of. There's a lot of people who are angry at me for what I did, for for leaving my band, and for for doing what I did, and and, and just taking off. Mm-hmm. But it was something for me. I was like, well, anybody in the same situation would have done the same thing, you know. And T- totally and no regrets right the song yeah the song yeah exactly and the song is more about like you know what screw you guys I'm just gonna do this and- <laughs> screw you guys I'm going to America yeah. I'm going, I'm go going to where the hard yeah. drugs are so you just came yeah. off <laughs> you just came <laughs> off a tour with Ingrid Michaelson what do you you know when you're on stage what's going through your mind I mean Ingrid Michaelson freaking smoking hot I dig her saw her live what do you think about uh, what do I think about the performance, or what do I think about Ingrid? What do you think about Ingrid and the performance? Bam! Ingrid's one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. She's she's absolutely brilliant. I mean, 
you, you hear about all these people who are doing really well in life and they're, they're kind of famous, they're not famous, whatever. Uh, Ingrid plays a bunch of TV shows, so she's getting there. She's doing really well, you know. But she's she's not a, she's not a dick, you know. She's the <laughs> nicest person. She's the nicest person ever. Yeah. And she she invited me on tour off her own back. I didn't get that tour to anybody else. She saw me playing in a club in New York and and took me out on the road. And it it wasn't like a it's who you it's who you know is 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 whatever. It, it was kind of a situation where it was very organic, and she. She just decided that that's what she wanted to do, and it says a lot about her that she's willing to give new artists a chance, you know? Totally. Well, um, and, and when I saw on tour that she was the most amazing person, she would come on stage with me, and she would she would include me in her family. She was, she was brilliant. Oh, that's I awesome. Love her. I think she's amazing. Well, you seem like you're a pretty positive person, you know? Seems like you're, you're kind of one of those people that seems like... You know, you would you would hand out the advice to follow your dreams and uh, yeah. you know do what you got to do. Where where does that passion come from? Hard drugs. <laughs> Fantastic. It all comes back to it's hard all drugs. Back to hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh great. The ironic thing is, the ironic thing is, I've never done a hard drug in my life, so this is all, all fun. <laughs> no, it comes from. I think it just comes from. I don't know. I come from a small town, and there's many many people who who are from small towns, and it's it's just something that. I don't know, I never wanted to be stuck in a small town, you know, I wanted to get out, I wanted to do something with my life, and I think once I finally, once I finally moved away from home, I realized what was out there, and every time I moved somewhere else, the world became a little bit bigger, you know, so first I left Lancashire and moved to Brighton, which is the south coast of England, which is a, still a small town, but it was slightly bigger, and then I moved from Brighton to London, because it was slightly bigger, and then I moved from London to New York. And I'm always constantly searching for a bigger place. But now I'm in New York. I'm like, oh balls! Where am I going to go from here? <laughs> oh yeah. balls! I yeah. be like, may- maybe, maybe my life is over at the age of 27. <laughs> La- lastly, I-, I noticed that you and me both share a passion for cheap wine. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Two so, Chuck, Chuck, if I yeah. just, as you said that, I just took a swig of Trader Joe's wine. <laughs> of the two yes, buck Chuck. That's two fantastic. Buck Chuck rocks. <laughs> so right now, um, Sing for the City is the EP that's out right now. You can get it on iTunes. Uh, can you give us some tour dates? Tour dates. Let me have a look. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> touring right now. I just have a, a few shows. I have a show on the 8th of May at the G-Spot in Baltimore. Uh, the 16th of May at the Tin Angel in Philadelphia. Uh, the 9th of July at the Nightcat in Eastern Maryland. And then I'm actually going back to the UK um, at the end of July to play some gigs there. So um, that's my that's my current tour date. Well, Perfect. hey, promise us that if you ever come to the City of Angels that you'll uh, let us know. I'm there all the time. So I'm actually going to be there in the early June and no doubt I'll have a show booked at that point. So I haven't got a book, anything booked right now, but early june i'm sure i'll be in los angeles perfect perfect can't wait to see you once again sing for the city is the ep out on itunes and then find them on facebook and uh you know till next time i'll uh, get the two buck chuck <laughs> <laughs> Cheer, <laughs> cheers to the two buck yeah. chuck man. greg it's been a pleasure thanks. thank you so much for having me thanks yeah. so much for having me Totally. Hey, so next week we are talking to Kerry Brothers. He is uh, one of the main artists featured on the Garden State soundtrack. He's also one of the founding people that's part of the Hotel Cafe tour. That's Kerry Brothers. We're looking forward to talking to him next week. Something is pulling me and I'm thinking of you. Are you thinking of me?